UK Prime Minister Liz Truss is facing another potential rebellion from her own Conservative MPs. This time it's over her refusal to commit, so far anyway, to raising benefits in line with inflation. It follows a major U-turn by her government on a planned abolition of the top rate of income tax. She was forced to abandon that plan after pressure from MPs in her party who signalled they wouldn't vote for it. But Liz Truss says she'll be sticking by the rest of her economic package designed to stimulate growth. Are you enjoying being Prime Minister? I am. It's a challenging role. It's a challenging time. But what I am focused on is delivering for the British people. Is it harder than you thought? I came in with very clear expectations that this was a tough time for our country. But I'm prepared to do what it takes to get us through these difficult times, to get us through this difficult winter and to come out stronger as a country. Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng has also agreed to bring forward publication of the government's medium-term fiscal plans and details of how it plans to cut government debt as a proportion of GDP. Financial markets initially took fright at the government's so-called growth plan, with the pound falling to record lows against the dollar, although it's since recovered. Graphs and grit. Turn this small town first into a... And for more on this, we can talk to Susanna Streeter, Senior Markets Analyst, who's joining me live now. Susanna, good to see you again. Just explain to us the difference between the two options that Liz Truss appears to be choosing between that idea of uprating benefits in line with inflation, as many of her own MPs want, or instead in line with wages. What's the difference between the two at this point? Well, when it comes to the difference in cost for families, these benefits are mainly um, aimed at working families, families who work already but receive these benefits known as universal credit to lift their wages to a certain standard. Now, if you increase uh, those benefits um, by the amount that wages are going up rather than inflation, it will cost the average family with working family with two children around $100 a month. That's uh, the cost that it would be because, of course, the benefits would not rise by so much as they would do ordinarily if they were lifted by inflation, which is currently running around double digits, 9.9%. And that's why it's caused such uproar, because there are other um, benefits actually that uh, uh, the Conservative Party and the List Trust are delivering for wealthier um, earners, for example. Bankers will see their uh, cap on bonuses lifted, even though now uh, the Conservatives have dropped this 45 pence change that they were going to introduce to um, cut this rate for higher earners. There is still a lot more available for those wealthier in society than, than, than those poorer in society. And Susanna, this latest um, about turn, let's call it that, from Kwasi Kwarteng, to bring forward the date of the publication of his medium-term fiscal plan, is that designed, do we think, to reassure financial markets? It certainly is. That was one of the reasons why we saw the financial markets uh, react uh, so uh, violently, really, to what was unveiled at the mini-budget, because there weren't these forecasts from the independent body, the Office um, for Budget Responsibility. And that was uh, why I think we saw this extra uh, volatility really sideswipe not just equity markets, but particularly uh, bond markets and why the pan- pound fell so dramatically. Since this semi-reversal of some of the tax cuts, that 45 pence rate I was telling you about, and Um, this pledge to be more transparent, bringing forward uh, this analysis. We've seen the pound lift to around a two-week high against the dollar and $1.14, and also government borrowing costs, those gilt yields fall back a little bit as well. So certainly, calm has returned. The FTSE 100 is up uh, a little bit earlier by just under 2%. So certainly, it has done the job for now of calming that volatility on financial markets. I think markets really do welcome this extra transparency. 
Okay, Susanna Streeter, thank you very much indeed.